Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim in the name of Allah most gracious most merciful Alhamdulillahi wa kafa wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala ibadihi alladhina istafa wa ala alihi wa ashabihi at-tayyibin at-tahirin wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsan ila yawmiddin wa 'anil a'immati al-arba'ah ridwanullahi ta'ala 'alayhim ajma'in wa 'anna ma'ahum bi mannika wa ihsanik wa 'an dhurriyyatina ila yawmil qiyamah all praises are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Blessings and salutations that are complete and spotless upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The best of creation, without doubt. Blessings as well upon all his companions who were stars and who were also from amongst the best of creation. Blessings and salutations upon the four illustrious imams. And blessings upon all the ulama of this ummah who have passed before us. And upon the ulama in our midst. And upon all of us. And upon our offspring to come until the day of qiyamah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all upliftment and keep us steadfast on deen. And use us and our offspring to serve this deen until the day of qiyamah. Ameen. Honored ulama, beloved brothers and sisters and dearest friends. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us for a purpose. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has creatures. لا يعصون الله ما أمرهم ويفعلون ما يؤمرون. He has creatures who do not disobey him in anything. Whatever he commands them, they do. They do not have the ability to disobey. Who are those creatures? The malaika. They are the angels. The angels do not have the ability to disobey. The same applies when it comes to those creatures on earth that do not have souls. They do not have the ability to disobey. The skies, the moon, the earth, the trees, the grass, they are totally subservient and we know that. وَإِن مِّن شَيْءٍ إِلَّا يُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِهِ وَلَكِن لَّا تَفْقَهُونَ تَسْبِيحَهُمْ All the creatures of Allah, whether they have life or not, we should understand the creatures of Allah, they all engage in the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in one way or another, and they worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we might not understand. The birds, the trees, the ocean, the water that you hear, the, the waves that beat against one another, we think it's just a sound, it soothes us. That is the sound of the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The clouds, they, not one drop is released unless Allah has ordered it. Nothing. The sun will never appear unless Allah has commanded it to appear. It is so obedient that today we can calculate calendars for years to tell you that at 6.23 the sun will set. Imagine. What if we were like that? Someone would say this man enters at 6.23 and 30 seconds. Our technology is far higher, isn't it? Our brains are far higher. But nay, we choose to disobey. The moon is such that people will calculate that at this point it shall be born and this is the first visible time, roughly. They will calculate it for you. People go out into space. They don't make a mistake of a nanosecond, not a millisecond, a nanosecond. They don't make a mistake. They know because of the obedience of the creatures of Allah, Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. When a tree is in your path, you bring an expert. The expert will tell you what you need to drop it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. Yet the trees themselves are prostrate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah has creatures, and at the head of those creatures, the angels, لا يعصون الله ما أمره. They do not transgress at all. So if Allah wanted worshippers alone, who only engage in worship, He has them. He doesn't need us. There are angels who engage in tawaf day in, day out around the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are angels who are engaged in istighfar, not for themselves, for us. وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ يُسَبِّحُونَ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّهِمْ وَيَسْتَغْفِرُونَ لِمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ Subhanallah. Allah is making mention that the angels... 
They declare the greatness of Allah, they praise Allah and they are seeking forgiveness for us on earth here. Because they can see that we are engaged in transgression day in day out. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, have mercy, forgive these people, forgive those on earth, Ya Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, had he had to punish us because of our deeds, he would have left nothing on the earth today. We don't deserve this oxygen that we are breathing. Sometimes a huge truck happens to be driving next to us and the exhaust is near the window and you know how it feels as soon as he revs to take off and all the fumes come into your window and you happen to close your window and some people will swear but they don't realize that they do not even deserve carbon monoxide. Not even that. Even that air is too pure for us to breathe. Yet we are breathing air for free. And we don't realize why we are in the dunya. We don't even realize what is the dunya. I spoke a few days ago about the recognition of Allah. Who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We don't even know. We have no clue to be honest with you. Who created me? How am I created? Why was I created? Where am I now? Where am I going? What is going to happen to me in a few days? What is going to be happen to, happening to me in a few minutes? I don't know. What is happening to me before I drop my hands from here? I don't know. May Allah grant us understanding. It is all in Allah's control. We have a small role to play, but we haven't recognized the greatness of the Creator. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there are other creatures who transgress. And they only transgress. Out of what? Out of pride. Qala ana khayrun minhu. Iblis and his army. What do they do? They only transgress. Out of what? They know Allah. They recognize Allah. They understand Allah, but they are proud and arrogant. The ulama, muhaddithin, mufassirin, and all the experts of this ummah's learning have all said that pride leads you to kufr. You are arrogant, you are proud, you think I have meh, meh, meh. It sounds like a goat, doesn't it? May Allah grant us understanding. I am the one. If you say I, I, that is how Iblis was led astray. What did he say? I, I am better. Ana, ana khayrum minhu. I am better than him. I can't. I can't lower myself. Today we have that problem in every community, society, in the Muslim ummah at large. Everyone feels he's better than the other. The minute you have a feeling I'm better than him, you are lower. You must remember that. Whether it is spiritually or in whatever way. Even if we are reading five salah, someone happens to be a drunkard outside. We do not condone the drinking. We know drinking is a kabira. But you must understand there might be one small deed that he might enter Jannah for and our pride and our backbiting of him, our salah that we made in the first self, the reward of it might go to the same person. There is a possibility. We can't become proud. Never. If we become proud and we feel, oh, this man is engaged in a sin, so therefore, yes, if he's engaged in a sin, you're allowed to talk about the sin and generalize and try and help him in person and help your, yourselves and your progeny and your ummah to stay away from that sin. But you can't think you are better than him. No. The ulama have explained that that is a major sin. So we should realize that we need to know that pride leads us to Jahannam. Pride leads us to Jahannam. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell Iblis? Whoever follows you from amongst them, from amongst men, I will fill Jahannam with you and with them. All of you. Follow him in what? In that pride. May Allah protect us. We need to humble ourselves down. We are not better than anyone else. An-nasu sawasiya ka asnanil misht. People are equal, like the, co like the teeth of a comb. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant that to us. And in fact, those who know Allah, those who recognize Allah, they will tell you we are worse than everyone else. La ilaha illallah. They will tell you we are worse than others. We all know how much we are swimming in. Each one knows his or her, or her own private sins that he or she is committing. May Allah forgive us all. May Allah grant us istiqama. So I spoke about recognition of Allah. Today I want to speak about recognition of the dunya. If we know Allah, we will get closeness to Allah. If we know the dunya, we will understand it is a doka. It is a, it is a cheat. It is a deception. But if we don't realize what is the dunya, we will never understand what it is. We will dive deeper into it. And it doesn't end anyway. Like someone diving into a pool, he doesn't realize that it is only a few centimeters. What's going to happen? He'll crack his skull. He can't see beyond the blue water to notice that even the bottom is also blue. It deceives him. 
He sees his reflection, thinking it's deep. He dives in. What happens? He cracks his skull. That is the dunya. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us in between these two creatures. Those that only worship and those that only transgress. We are in the middle. We will worship and if ever we make a mistake out of human nature and if ever we fall into sin, we will turn, we will engage into an act of worship that neither the malaika do nor the shaitan does. What is that act of worship? Tawbah. Tawbah, turning to Allah. The malaika, they make tawbah for us. They don't need tawbah because they don't engage in any sin. And the shaitan, if they engaged in tawbah, they would be better than us. Shaitan doesn't engage in tawbah. Shaitan told Allah, look, give me respite, grant me time. I'm going to show you these people are bad. And I will show you they will worship me and others, but they won't worship you. That's what we are doing today. We are becoming Abdul Shaitan. May Allah save us. Wallahi, there are two categories in the dunya. Abdul Rahman, Abdul Shaitan. We are one of the two. We are either worshippers of Allah or we are either worshippers of the shayateen. It's a fact of life. But the winner is the one who can realize where he is and consolidate that which is good and eradicate that which is bad. That is the winner. So what is this dunya? What is the dunya? Before I get into what is the dunya, let me inform you. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was he not protected from sin by Allah? No sin. Protected by Allah. Ma'asum, the highest of creatures. Sallallahu ala Muhammad. What did he do? Every day he used to engage in istighfar. Oh Allah, I seek your forgiveness. Oh Allah, I seek your forgiveness. Oh Allah, I seek your forgiveness. How many times? One narration says 70, one narration says more than 70, and one narration says up to 100 times a day. Did he need it? Did he need it? Wallahi, he did not need it. He did not need it and he did it so we could follow his sunnah. So if you are following the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, myself and yourselves, we will also do that. So now we have tasbihs. What happens to a tasbih? We have a marathon. You know John Benson or Ben Johnson, I don't know his name. When I was young, he used to run very fast and he cheated. He had some steroids and he was banned. So what we do, we follow Ben Johnson and John Benson. And stuff, 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 nine minutes, nine seconds, hundred gone. And then we're happy, hey, I did a hundred. Sunnah tariqah fulfilled. Is that what is wanted? Is that what is required? Are we not playing a game? They were running 100 meter sprint. We're running 100 meter tasbih. That's not what is required. When we pull one, we say, Astaghfirullah. We need to sit and think, what have I said? And what does Allah promise that his response will be? That is the winner. I have said, Ya Allah, I am a criminal. I committed sin. Ya Allah, I seek your forgiveness. I will not repeat that sin. Ya Allah, forgive me. I plead with you. That is what you are saying. What is the statement? Astaghfirullah. As simple as that, the meaning is what I just told you. Now you sit, you think, what did I say? And then what does Allah say? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, whoever seeks forgiveness, I forgive him. Man taba taba Allahu alayhi. We know the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Inna Allah yaqbilu tawbat al-abdi ma lam yugharghir. Whoever seeks forgiveness, I forgive him, Allah says. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he will forgive everyone who seeks correct forgiveness until the point of gargara, which is almost death. Inna Allah ta'ala yabsutu yadahu bil-layli liyatuba musi'u al-nahar wa yabsutu yadahu bil-nahar liyatuba musi'u al-layli hatta tadlu'a al-shamsu min maghribiha. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues stretching the arm of mercy every day to forgive those who have committed sin by night. And the same happens by night to forgive those who have committed sin by day. So now when we say, Astaghfirullah, stop. Allah will tell you and Allah will respond. My worshiper, I have forgiven you. I love you. You are a banda of mine. You are as pure as the day you were born. One Astaghfirullah. One Astaghfirullah. Now when you repeat it 10 times thinking, 70 times thinking what you've said and holding on and feeling the answer. What is Ihsan? أَن تَعْبُدَ اللَّهَ كَأَنَّكَ تَرَاهُ فَإِن لَمْ تَكُنْ تَرَاهُ فَإِنَّهُ يَرَاكُ Ihsan is to worship Allah as though you are watching Him. If you cannot perceive that, then you should understand He is watching you. You must be able to feel His existence. When you talk to Him, He responds. أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِ Allah says, I answer the call of every caller who calls out to me. Does he answer positively or negatively? He answers positive, positively because he does not have a negative quality. 
رب العزة والجلال